Let's look at another video of capital budgeting where we will solve an example for payback period for two different projects. Assume the following cash flows for two projects. So initially the outlay is 1000 rupees. So this is all in rupees. At the end of first year, project S generates an inflow of 500 rupees, whereas project L generates an inflow of 100 rupees. At the end of second year, project S generates an inflow of 400 rupees, while project L generates an inflow of 300 rupees and so on. Assume that the cash flows are occurring at the end of the year. Find out the payback period for both these projects. So as you can note here for project S, the cash inflow is higher during the early years and then it becomes lesser and lesser. Whereas for project L, the cash inflows are lesser during the initial years and then it keeps on increasing. Project S is a short term project where the inflows are higher during the short term and then it fades off. Whereas project L is a long term project where the inflows are higher in the distant future. So let's try to find the payback period for both these projects. Let us first draw the timeline or the time scale for these two projects. So these two are the timelines for project S and project L. So let us first find the cumulative cash inflow for project S. So at the end of first year, the inflow is 500 rupees. Now, as I mentioned, we are only considering the inflow. For the second year, we get 400 rupees. So 500 plus 400 is 900. At the end of third year, we'll have 900 plus 300, which is 1200. And at the end of the fourth year, we'll have 1200 plus 100, which is 1300 rupees. Same way for project L. At the end of second year, we'll have 100 plus 300, which is 400 rupees. At the end of third year, we'll have 400 plus 400, which is 800 rupees. At the end of the fourth year, we'll have 800 plus 600, which is 1400 rupees. Now, we know the formula for payback of an uneven cash flow, because this is an uneven cash flow. Both S and L have uneven cash flows. So payback is equal to years before full recovery plus unrecovered amount at the start of the period divided by cash flow during the period. So now let's take the case of project S. So here at the end of second year, we have recovered 900 rupees, but we want to recover 1000 rupees. And at the end of third year, we have recovered 1200 rupees. So basically, we will be able to recover 1000 rupees in the third year. So years before full recovery is 2 plus, now we have recovered 900 rupees at the end of second year. Now unrecovered amount at the start of the period. So what is remaining to be recovered is 1000 minus 900, which is 100 divided by cash flow during the period. So cash flow during the third year is 
300 rupees. So this becomes 2.33 years. This can also be written as 2 years and 1 by third of a year which is 4 months. So 2 years and 4 months. Now let's take the case of project L. So in case of project L we want to recover 1000 rupees. Now at the end of the third year we have recovered 800 rupees and at the end of the fourth year we will recover 1400 rupees. So years before full recovery is 3 because we will recover the entire amount during the fourth year plus unrecovered amount at the start of the period so unrecovered amount at the beginning of fourth year is 1000 minus 800 which is 200 divided by cash flow during the period so cash flow during the period is 600 rupees in the fourth year we are getting an inflow of 600 rupees so this also becomes 1 by 3 so this is 3.33 years or 3 years and 4 months so project S has a payback period of 2.33 years while project L has a payback period of 3.33 years so project L will recover the money later than project S so if we have to compare these two projects preference will be given to project S as per the payback period method so even though project L may have a much better cash flow in the later years this payback period method ignores it and prioritizes only those projects which can recover the original capital sooner